out. Right, let's get on to net neutrality. Uh, joining me on the line is Adrian Kennard, who's spoken to us before. I dare to say friend of the show now. If you speak to us twice, you're a friend of the show. Uh, yes. Director of Andrews and Arnold Limited. Welcome back to the show, uh, Adrian. Uh, thank you for joining me. So net neutrality, is yeah. this something that uh, ISPs, such as yourself, independent ISPs, is this something you are having to start to be concerned about? You're having to start to think about? Uh, well, in our case, not really, because we don't really treat the traffic any differently. But sure. it, is, it is a factor. It's one of these things that's come in as a law uh, across the whole of Europe, um, last year in fact, more as a sort of preemptive measure to stop things getting out of hand. So it hasn't really caused much in the way of problems, but it is something ISPs do have to think about. And we're actually seeing some ISPs in the UK doing things now which probably don't quite fit with the rules, which is um, interesting. Well, yeah, well, some of the mobile operators, I noticed Vodafone launched a package just this week, and three have got a package called Go Binge, and there's some other operators. So there's, there's packages where things like you can access certain streaming services without it using any of your quota, which seems like a good idea on the face of it, right. but that's not what net neutrality is saying. You're meant to be not discriminating depending on the application. And it, it's not always obvious why that's net neutrality is a good thing and free streaming from Netflix perhaps isn't. If you see what I mean. <laughs> for people who listen who are, who are getting confused, because I think a lot yeah. of people misunderstand net neutrality for, well, if you use more, maybe you should pay more. Oh, no, it's yeah. It's really about the user, is it? It's about, for example, Netflix have had to pay already. Uh, this is out in the US. They've had yeah. to pay already in March, I think. They agreed to pay a, a fee to Comcast uh, to improve the speed uh, with which the service reached the. the you know, transmitted Netflix movies. Uh, and subsequently, we've also seen a rise in Netflix subscriptions in the US and in Europe, bizarrely enough, as well. But it, it's not about the consumer using, it's about you guys, and when I say you guys, I, I don't yeah. mean just you, but the, the internet service providers uh, allowing that data to travel free and fast uh, over, you know, over the, the, the copper wires or whatever it's going yeah. through, the fiber. Well Without charging people, you're, you're, going to char you're treating the information coming from a small company with equal amount of respect and freedom to the information coming from Google and Netflix. Yeah, and yeah it's, it's not so much about charging, although zero rating traffic is discriminating and does create a, a difference. It is the fact that anybody can connect to the internet and start a new service. They don't have to go and negotiate with every ISP and every mobile operator and possibly pay money to allow their service to, to get through that network uh, properly, either zero rated or prioritized or whatever. Um, if the internet is treating all data the same, then we don't create this horribly complicated market with lots of separate negotiations and lots of really confusing tariffs for consumers when they're choosing things. It's bad enough now where you're looking at technology and speed and, and how much data you're using, but if you have to think about which streaming services and which, you know, which social media you, you're using to choose your ISP, it would be a nightmare. Do you think, uh, I mean, I know you're saying that it's not an issue for you guys right now because there was the, the EU directive yeah. and that's kind of settled everything. And a lot of uh, countries are making sure that net neutrality, neutrality remains. Mm. But we know how these things work. Money comes into play. ISP start to squeal a little bit and say, look, you know, there's a lot of data. In. And let's not forget the laws that were laid down for the Internet mm. uh, all those years ago. Nobody at that point imagined the amount of data that oh, no, I mean, just flying across the Internet. So This isn't saying that people don't pay for data, but already... The data has got cheaper and cheaper over time. It does. The, the technology has changed. So there isn't really a huge problem there. We're not seeing stupidly high prices for internet access, even though we now have streaming media, which would have cost an absolute fortune just 10 years ago. Um, and these, the, the net neutrality regulations aren't really old laws. This is stuff that came in last year to make sure that the, the market we've enjoyed keeps going. Um, yeah. I mean, if I can come up with an analogy, imagine if your electricity supplier had done a deal with, I don't know, not picking on anyone, but someone like Samsung or something, where the electricity that TV uses is cheaper, but they haven't done the same deal with LG. And you've got to pick your electricity company depending on which TV you've got to get the best deal. It, it sounds crazy, but that's sort of what's happening with the internet. 
And what we need now in Europe, certainly in the UK, we need people like Ofcom to actually take these rules seriously and start enforcing them and stop this sort of convoluted setup actually happening and, they, and make sure the, these regulations actually work. Have Ofcom started to engage with the whole idea of net neutrality? Uh, well, they've got authority to from, from last June, but I haven't heard that they've actually done anything yet. Now, as I say, it's not been a big problem yet. At the moment, things like zero rating some traffic sound like a good idea, but they're possibly just testing the water in the thin, thin end of the wedge. Can you, we need, we need Ofcom. Can you explain for listeners what zero rating is? Sorry, it's basically saying discriminating certain traffic. You're saying some applications or some services don't use up your quota, whereas others do. Right. So if you're, if you're using the wrong streaming service that isn't on their list, or you're using something other than the, the thing they've zero rated, you use up your quota and, and maybe have to pay more, your service stops, that sort of thing. Right. And as you say, I, I, do you know what? I, I have to say, I loved your analogy about the electricity, because I think that makes <laughs> it very, very simple for people to understand and why uh, even though it's not a it's not an immediate problem it's more why is it more immediate in the US is it because of these uh, cases that have uh, come yes, up ahead of us it's uh, well they don't have quite the same um, sort of lockdown on net neutrality it's a big debate right. in the US hence the payments like this and there's people calling for the same sorts of net neutrality laws in the US because I think anybody sensibly looking at this realizes that we have got all of the stuff we've got on the internet because it's been such an open and and, yeah. and I say free, I don't mean in terms of money, it's an open platform where everyone's treated the same and all the data the same and that has led to the benefits we've got now and we don't want to throw that away by creating a commercial mess where, where you know content providers having to pay each ISP to get traffic through to that ISP. And yeah, because imagine what you would lose. You would lose people who couldn't afford to get that information out there. Mm. They would just disappear. They would be eaten up, wouldn't they? Well, yeah. I mean, remember, some of the services we enjoy, things like YouTube and Twitter and Facebook, all started as really small things. Yeah. If they tried to start now and they had to pay all the content, or all the ISPs to get their content out there, they'd probably ne never get off the ground. And of course, that, that cost ultimately, that's what I was saying in my intro piece, that cost will ultimately either be passed on to the consumer, so you're going to have to pay more in order to have access to that content, or they're going to start experiencing very slow speed uh, well, certain, certain services that they, they like. You think, to but as I say, the, the actual infrastructure in the internet is increasing all the time in terms of capacity. And right. it is increasing. So for the same price now as, as a few years ago, you have many times more capacity. So even though we're using more and things like streaming media is, is massive amounts of data, that doesn't necessarily mean it's costing massively more. So, so the argument that we need to have these models to support all this extra data doesn't really fit. The technology is moving forward anyway. Okay, okay, I get your point. I, that, that, that's a very, very interesting point because you're right. We are streaming a hell of a lot more oh, than yeah. we were and the prices haven't uh, increased to, to an unaffordable amount. Um, Adrian, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, Adrian Kennett, uh, Director of Andrews and Arnold Limited, their independent uh, telecom.